here. Today we are making a watercolor painting of sunflowers inspired by Vincent Van Gogh. Here we go. For this project, you will need some paper. In this case, I have sketching paper. Um, if you have watercolor paper at home, that would be best. We also have some watercolors. They come in a kit of eight ovals. This is by Prang semi-moist watercolors. If you do not have this at home, you can use washable markers. All you need is to put a washable marker in a little cup of water for about 30 minutes. Let the ink from the marker bleed into the water and voila, you have watercolor paint. Step number one, load your brush into the cup of water and rub it over the oval with the color that you need. In this case, I'm using yellow for the center of my sunflowers. A good rule of thumb for art, if you are making a field, a bouquet, you go with odd numbers. In this case, we have three. You can go from three to five. Or even seven. Play with size as well. In a sunflower field, you will find some small sunflowers, medium sunflowers, and larger sunflowers. Notice how I'm leaving space for the petals and just a little bit of empty space here for our little garden friends. If you desire to put some shadow in the center of each sunflower, you can use just a little bit of brown. This technique is called wet on wet. We did not wait for these centers to fully dry. We are painting with just a little bit of brown over these centers while they're still wet. Let the paint do its thing. It's going to bleed in with the other color and that is exactly what you want. That is the effect of this technique, wet on wet. Now that you have the shadow and the highlights in each of the centers, we are ready for petals. I did rinse my brush before moving on to the next color. In this case, we are starting with yellow and then we will do the same effect that we did here, but instead of brown, we're gonna use orange. Load your brush, dip it in the yellow, and pull from the center out your sunflower petals. Make sure that they are nice and liquidy. You are in charge of your painting. Please remember your painting is not an exact copy of mine. All sunflowers are different and all people are different. All artwork is different. Don't stress, have fun. Sunflower number one. sunflower number two. For the wet on wet technique and the effect that we are going for, you are going to have to practice lots of patience. Watercolor is a very zen, relaxing form of art. I would do the petals on two sunflowers. Rinse your brush, dip it in the orange, and while the petals are still wet, we are going to do the same technique with orange inside of the petals, but this time our brush strokes are shorter. One at a time, slowly but steady and let the paint do its thing. Continue to sunflower number two. The 
beauty about watercolor is that you do have control the paint goes where you tell it to go but in the end it will do whatever the water feels like doing at that time which that's a really cool surprise let the sunflowers dry for um, about 20-30 minutes we are ready for the stems load your brush activate the color that you need in this case we're using green you make the stem and sunflowers have a really long wavy leaves Redip your brush if you need to. And the stems can overlap. Please, please, please do not stress. While we let these stems dry a little bit, we are going to block in the circles for the ladybugs. Activate the color that you need. In this case, I'm using red. And place the ladybugs where you have space, where you think they're going. Um, are they together? Are they far apart? Maybe they're chatting. Try your best to make a circular shape, but you can always outline it with the Sharpie when you add the details. Not a big deal if it's not a perfect circle. And we are going to let it dry. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe just a little baby here. That would be cute. Okay. Now that we are done painting, we are ready for outlining, adding details with a Sharpie. Any permanent marker would work just fine. The beauty about this project is that you outline the shapes or where you see the color changing. That's what's going to give you this more three-dimensional look, which is really, really nice on watercolor. Avoid, if you have a little section of wet paint, work around that. Remember, you can maneuver your paper I like to start with the center. You can start with the center or around the petals. Kind of follow the direction where the paint went. This is where we talk the beginning of the lesson. It's always a really cool surprise to see what the water is going to do. You are kind of guiding it, but in the end, it's a really cool surprise to figure out what the water did. Okay, so there is the center of my first sunflower. I will move on to the outside of the petals, following exactly where the paint stopped on the paper. Remember, this is an organic work of art, so it should not be such hard lines, like if you were drawing them with a ruler. This is more um, imitating nature. Okay, so there's the petals. Now I'm ready for the inside.
kind of following the little waves that the paint made. What if we mess up, Mrs. Orndorff? Well, this is all part of the learning process. You are not gonna mess up as long as you continue to enjoy the process and have fun and kind of accept what the water did. That's part of um, working with the watercolor process. When you see here little details like lighter areas, you can kind of outline them. That kind of makes it look like seeds, but it's just part of the painting. That's gonna give you more um, depth on your paper. And voila, first flower. finishing details with your thin sharpie outline the stems of your flowers and the long wavy leaves that you made for your sunflowers just like so make sure you're capturing that wave on the outside of the leaves and continue for each flower that you painted. With a thicker Sharpie, if you have an ultra fine Sharpie and a fine Sharpie, I would use this thickness for the ladybugs. It would be easier, but it's not completely necessary if you don't have a thicker Sharpie. Outline your ladybug, draw the line down the middle of the back of the ladybugs, wings fill that little part in three little dots and maybe little feet if you wish to put little feet on the ladybug do that for every ladybug maybe they are chatting making plants going to a garden party i don't know use your imagination when you finish your ladybug with your thinner Sharpie, you can make a broken line to make just a little pathway of where you think your ladybug has been. If you want to get a little fancy, you can make a loop. Continue. I will point out here, I have a little blemish and that's because my hand rubbed on my ladybug before the watercolor was fully dry. If that happens, not a big deal. You can always draw over it, turn it into a positive. We talk about this in the classroom quite a bit. Art never has to be a stressful situation. It's always a learning experience. Now that your ladybugs are done, you may sign your name. You are the artist. And enjoy. Thanks for watching.